Hello, everyone. This is the CircuitPython Weekly Meeting for October 23rd, 2023. This is the time of the week where we get together to talk about all things CircuitPython. I'm Dan, and I'm sponsored by Adafruit to work on CircuitPython. You may ask, what is CircuitPython? It's a version of Python designed to run on tiny computers called microcontrollers. CircuitPython development is primarily sponsored by Adafruit, so if you want to support Adafruit and CircuitPython, consider purchasing hardware from Adafruit.com. This meeting is hosted on the Adafruit Discord server. You can join anytime by going to adafru.it slash discord. We hold a meeting in the CircuitPython dev text channel and the CircuitPython voice channel. Typically, this meeting happens on Mondays at 2 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time, 1 at 11 a.m. U.S. Pacific Time, except when it coincides with the U.S. holiday. In the notes doc, there's a link to a calendar you can view online or add to your favorite calendar app. We also send notifications about upcoming meetings via Discord. If you would like to receive these notifications, ask us to add you to this at sign CircuitPythonistas Discord role. And I mentioned the notes doc. There's a notes document that accompanies the meeting and recording. It starts out as a Google Doc, which you can uh, enter your notes into each week and then gets turned into uh, a final form that's linked to. And it includes timestamps to go along with the video so you can use the doc to skip around and view the parts of the meeting that interest you most. The meeting tends to run about 45 minutes, plus or minus 15 minutes. After each meeting, we post a link for the next meeting's notes document to the CircuitPython dev channel on the Adafruit Discord. Check the pinned messages in the CircuitPython dev channel to find the latest notes doc so you can add your notes for the following meeting. If you wish to participate but cannot attend, you can leave hug reports and status updates in the document for us to read during the meeting. This meeting is held in five parts. I'll explain each part as we come around to it, um, just not to be too redundant. So uh, we'll start out with uh, community news. I'll take a timestamp. There we go. Um, so community news is just a look at all things CircuitPython and Python on hardware in the community. And it's usually a set of chosen, a set of chosen items from our Python and microcontrollers newsletter, which I'll talk about in more detail in a minute. So the first item up is um, Raspberry Pi 5, 5 capabilities emerge. Uh, we've been hearing more and more about the RPi 5, a single board computer. And uh, there are a couple of items that are of particular note to certain Python users. Uh, the one I'll mention here is that there's a difference in how GPIO pins are handled on Raspberry Pi 5. Uh, it used to be before Raspberry Pi 5, all GPIO, mem all GPIO pins were memory mapped. But now uh, access to those pins goes through the new RP1 bridge chip, which is on the Pi 5 board. So this means they're no longer mapped to the processors in memory, and so it can break some software that relies on the old way of doing it. So the, uh, the our Raspberry Pi people have uh, updated the GPIO 0 library is being able to properly access the GPIO pins on the Raspberry Pi 5. And we're working on that to make sure that uh, the software that we use uh, is up, uses the updated library and that it works properly. So there's some links in the notes doc and in yesterday's, in today's newsletter, uh, uh, Python or microcontrollers newsletter, which you can take a look for more in, in, uh, details about that. And the next item up is that uh, we released CircuitPython 827 last week on Thursday. Um, it's the latest bug fix revision, the latest stable revision of CircuitPython. It's a new stable release. Uh, there's a link to uh, the details. There aren't too many changes in here. There are a couple of bug fixes, fixing a problem with MVNS and fixing a problem with RGB matrix memory allocation. So if you have trouble with um, RGB matrix on, say, the Matrix Portal S3, for instance, uh, update to this latest version. And there were also three new boards and some board fixes, board pin fixes in here. So I mentioned that all these details come from the CircuitPython and Weekly, CircuitPython Weekly newsletter. It's also called the Python and Microcontrollers uh, newsletter. It's uh, run by CircuitPython, edited by our very own Ann 
Grella, and it's emailed every Monday. Uh, there's a link in the notes to where you can find the archives for this newsletter. Um, it highlights the latest Python and hardware-related news from around the web, including CircuitPython, Python, and MicroPython developments. We'd love to uh, hear about things that you think should be in the newsletter. You can do this in a variety of ways. You can submit a PR to the draft um, of the next week's newsletter. That's, the, that's held on GitHub. You can also uh, uh, tag us on uh, X or on um, Mastodon or some other social media site with the hashtag CircuitPython, or you can email cpnews at adafruit.com. Any of those things work. We're happy to take any of them. So thanks very much. All right, now we'll go on to um, the state of CircuitPython um, libraries and Blinka. This is a qualitative overview of the entire project. It gives us a chance to look at the health of the CircuitPython project separate from the status updates. We'll talk about the project overall, then separately discuss the core, libraries, and Blinka. So first of all, we'll look at the overall numbers in the past week. In the past week, there were 18 pull requests merged by 14 authors. Um, I see some new names I haven't seen before. SYMM and C010 and Ilario. Thanks very much if you're new. Or AXEIA also. There were three reviewers of these 18 pull requests, and the result of these pull requests was that there were 11 issues closed by six people, but 18 issues opened by 17 people. So um, we've got some catching up to do on issues. That's fine. Uh, I would also note that work that you do during October uh, in GitHub is uh, applicable to the Hacktoberfest um, uh, celebration or competition or whatever you want to call it. So go uh, Google Hacktoberfest to find out how you can participate in that. And next up, uh, we'll do um, the core, CircuitPython core. And Scott, are you available to read that? Yeah, happy to. Thanks, Dan. Uh, OK, so numbers for the core. We had 10 pull requests merged from seven different authors. Thank you to all of those authors. Um, I, uh, I'll highlight uh, Axia as a person who's been doing a number of board uh, PR, so thanks to them for that. Um, we had two reviewers, myself and Dan. We had 25 open pull requests, which is that one one page barrier. Uh, but I bet we'll get through these. It is a Monday after all. We haven't had time to do a bunch of review reviews. Our oldest is still 400 and, well, is older now. It's 475 days old, and that's the uh, dual LUN, uh, logical unit mass storage thing, I think. Um, and then we have another, uh, a number of others that have been open uh, for a bit of time. So if any of those are board related, please take a look uh, and uh, take a look at those PRs and see which ones you can close or, or get across the finish line and merge it in. Uh, we had five closed issues by three people and eight opened by eight people. So we're up three, uh, which is not too bad, but uh, and pretty typical. Uh, for a total of 729 open issues. Uh, you can check those out at github.com slash adafruit slash circuitpython slash issues. Uh, we use the milestone system to triage um, the issues as they, they come in, uh, de deciding prioritization for Adafruit-funded work. Um, that's to say that if uh, you find an issue that is marked long-term but still want to work on it, we're happy to support you to do that. It's just unlikely that an Adafruit-funded person will do the work uh, themselves. Uh, the highlights for uh, milestones is that we have 11 open issues for 8.2x, which is the um, version, uh, the current stable version. We have 55 open issues for 9.0, uh, which is the next major stable version. Um, so lots of, lots of the work into main right now is going into 9.0 work. And uh, lastly, I wanted to highlight that I created a 10.0 issue as well. Um, right now, that's basically uh, for any uh, re related deprecation stuff. So uh, filing issues for like delete this thing or remove this thing in 10.0. Uh, so that's why I added 10.0 there. There's currently no issues open, un open underneath it, uh, but we should make those as we need them. Um, and six issues not assigned to Milestone at the time that these stats were taken, so we'll need to do a little bit more triaging uh, on this Monday. 
And that's it for the core. All right, thank you, Scott. And next up is the library section, which uh, Tim can read for us. All right, thanks, Dan. Uh, this section covers the CircuitPython libraries, which is the Python layer of code that allows you to interact with various different pieces of hardware uh, and offers helper libraries that make it easier to do uh, different things at a higher level. Um, all of these libraries, you can find them on GitHub. They'll all start with the name Adafruit underscore CircuitPython underscore, and then have whatever the name of the library is. Uh, across all of those libraries this week, we had eight pull requests merged by seven authors uh, and two reviewers. Um, of those authors, the couple of names that stand out to me that might be uh, newer or less frequent contributors are c 10 uh, Sim, and Ilario. I think, uh, don't recall seeing those names before. So thank you to those folks who, uh, again, might be newer or less frequent contributors. Thanks to all of our other authors as well who uh, do contribute more frequently to some of the libraries and things. Uh, we had two reviewers. So thank you to Scott and myself for keeping the reviews going this week. Um, of those, uh, let's see, it was eight pull requests merged. The oldest one of those was 22 days and the newest... Uh, several were all just one day, so uh, working mostly with newer pull requests this week. Um, after those, it leaves us with 40 open pull requests across all those libraries. Uh, the oldest of those is 431 days, uh, but I do think that one is a draft, and the newest is uh, just a single day old. Um, there are, uh, excuse me, over the past week, I should say, there were uh, six closed issues by five people and eight new issues opened by seven people. Um, all of our repos have the Hacktoberfest label on the repo uh, repository itself, so issues and PRs uh, and activity do count towards that. Um, there are a total of 660 open issues right now across all those libraries, and 19 of those are labeled as good first issues. Uh, which are identified for folks who have uh, e either less experience or perhaps are newer to programming, newer to uh, contributing to CircuitPython. If you'd like to get a look at those, um, you can go to circuitpython.org slash contributing. On that page, it lists out the open uh, PRs and issues. If you click on over to the issues tab, there is a drop down there to filter by good first issue. Uh, if you're interested in getting involved, that's a great place um, to do that as well as uh, joining us here on Discord, like where this meeting occurs. Uh, in PyPy stats across the libraries this week, we had 68,930 downloads across those 314 libraries. Uh, the top 10 list is here in the newsletter if you'd like to check that out. And there was uh, one new library in the last week that was uh, over in the community bundle. And there uh, are a couple of updated libraries here as well, if you want to check out the links to those in the newsletter. And that's what we've got in library land for this week. Thanks. All right. Uh, thank you very much, Tim. We'll go on to uh, the Blinka section, which uh, Melissa reads. Hello. So Blinka is our CircuitPython compatibility layer for MicroPython, Raspberry Pi, and other single board computers. And this week we had zero pull requests merged. There are currently four open pull requests among all the repositories. Uh, there was zero issues open and two open by two people. There are currently none with the Hacktoberfest label uh, assigned, but uh, since it's assigned at a repo level, it, uh, all of them would count towards Hacktoberfest requests. Um, let's see, there are currently 75 open issues and there were 11,692 PyPI downloads in the last week, uh, 6,827 PyWheels downloads in the last month, and we are at 121 supportive boards. And that's it. All right. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, next up is Hub Reports. Um, Hug Reports is a chance to highlight folks in the CircuitPython community and beyond for doing awesome things. I'll start, and then we'll go down the list alphabetically to give everyone a chance to participate. If you are text only or are missing the meeting, I'll read your notes when I get to them in the list. So as I said, I'll start. Uh, first of all, thanks to Scott for discussion about the merges that are underway for MicroPython and for fixing issues, both with the MicroPython v1.20.0 
uh, merge, which we finished last week, and the V1.21.0 merge, which is underway at the moment. And thanks also to Scott for splitting up display I.O., which is going to happen um, in 900 to be able so we can turn more parts of display I.O. on and off, and so it's organized in a more reasonable way. Uh, thanks to uh, SnipEye, who noticed uh, and fixed an interrupt issue in RP2040 Pulsein, and we're working that PR right now. And then thanks to Unexpected Maker, who has been very good. They introduce new boards, and then also um, those boards, sometimes there are changes that are need. They push uh, changes for those boards, both to the eight and nine branches right now, and they're different right now, so it's more work, but we appreciate Unexpected Maker keeping up with those changes. Okay, next up is C. Grover. Uh, I'll read theirs. Thanks to Foamy Guy and Scott for quickly fixing a Git error cascade I caused with a typo in a community bundle submission. And then next up is DJ Devon, who's here but can't read at the moment. Uh, thanks to Scott for improving memory allocation for the Matrix Portal S3 and fixing hard faults on file save. Thanks to the CircuitPython developers for all their work for ESP, IDF, and MicroPython merging and pushing a minor A27 release update this week. Thanks to C. Grover for a new audio breakout board that should be arriving this week. Thanks to Tim, Foamy Guy, for streaming the task of changing all display.show instances to root group in library examples and learn guides for the 9.0 release. And thanks, and also a group hug for everyone doing awesome things for CircuitPython. And next up is Tim. All right, thanks, Dan. Um, I have hard reports this week. Thank you to uh, C. Grover, who last week let me know that I had music going in my uh, audio during a live stream. Uh, I very much appreciate that. Caught it early and deleted it to avoid any copyright issues. Um, thank you to you, Dan, uh, for pointing me towards some information about the Let's Encrypt certificates this morning and confirming the usage of the problematic type on a specific URL that I was looking at. And then uh, thank you to Jeff, uh, who looked over a library patch and caught an issue that was introduced by my IDE editing uh, some white space inside the code that I had not caught on. I appreciate that as well. And that is what I've got. Thank you. All right. Thank you. All right. Uh, Jeff, are you able to speak? Uh, I think so. I'm just dropping in real quick. I'm uh, traveling for a little while in Spain and Portugal, but I wanted to stop in with a group hug. And thanks, thank you, Dan, and also Scott for working on the merge. Melissa, thank you for the Qualia guide. I worked on some of that stuff um, before going on the trip, and I appreciate you getting that all, uh, you know, just in, in great shape to share with uh, the public. And finally, Anne, I really love your Trek-themed PCB art project. And I know that there's a lot going on that I'm not aware of, but those are some of the highlights that I did notice from over here in Europe. Thank you. All right, thank you, Jeff. And next up is Liz. Uh, hug report Scott for a good discussion and feedback on design of CircuitPython libraries. And Foamy Guy for the Flip Clock project, uh, library. I used it for the first time last week. I remember when you were working on it, but I was able to actually use it. It's really amazing, especially the script for generating the sprite sheets. All right. And that's it. Thanks, Liz. And next up is Melissa. Uh, so I wanted to give a hug to Carter for helping me with updating guides and scripts for uh, Raspberry Pi Bookworm. Uh, to Jeff for addressing my issue about the buttons on the Qualia while on vacation and a group project everyone else. All right, thank you. And next up is Scott. Hello, just a hug to ADCC uh, for doing a number of investigations related to CircuitPython. Uh, really appreciate you looking into a variety of things. All right, thank you. All right, thanks to everybody for giving hugs. Next up is status updates. Uh, this is the time, our time to tell folks what we're up to individually. I'll start and go through the list as usual. Uh, people take a couple of minutes and talk about what they've been doing since the last meeting and what they'll be doing until the next meeting. You could also uh, provide tips and tricks relevant to what uh, you're working on. And if, it is, if we end up with some having some significant discussion about something, we can move it to the in the weeds section in case it requires more discussion. So I will start. Uh, as I mentioned, I released CircuitPython 827 last week. It's got some new boards, board fixes, and a fix for the RGB matrix storage issues that can cause errors. 
and I'm in the process of merging uh, MicroPython v1.21.0 into CircuitPython. Uh, Scott's working with me on that. It appears close to done. We have a few more tests there failing, and we'll make a PR and then see whether we can get everything to be green on the continuous integration tests. Next up is C. Grover. I'll read theirs. Completed the testing and published the BNO uh, 055 uh, nine DOF sensor calibration and double tap methods. Submitted a PR to the driver repo with the sensor cal calibration example. All cr also created a circuit Python method for detecting taps. And there's a link to some notes about this um, in the notes. Submitted an issue of how to format a circuit dependency in the requirements.txt list of a circuit of a community bundle repo. Listing a core circuit Python module is straightforward but it's not clear how to reference the dependency on a second community bundle library. So that would be very helpful to document that, yes. Okay, next up I'll read DJ Devon's uh, submission. Finished designing an enclosure for the three and a half inch TFT feather wing. I'm extremely happy to see Lady Ada revising the three and a half inch TFT. They haven't been available in the store for over a year. It is by far my favorite Adafruit TFT for rapid prototyping and beta testing because you can plug any feather into it. Upon request, designed a stand for a single P5 matrix panel and returned from two-week vacation and fixed a lot of issues around the house before starting on multiple Halloween-related projects. Next up, I'll read uh, some stuff from ADCC. Improved make translation data.py efficiency, which in turn improves the build times by about 33%. I'm working through improving QSTIR compression. Given the, given the current compression dictionary, escaping shorter QSTIRs isn't always the best choice, and we'll sub submit a PR when I'm satisfied. Bad news on the Mac Sonoma problem. Mac OS SIP and sandboxing is blocking my user agent approach to modifying mounts, putting it aside for now. And in case anybody wants to know, Mac OS Sonoma uh, delays writes to uh, disk drives, maybe just USB drives, maybe all drives, and it causes CircuitPy not to work very well. It causes auto reload not to work very well. It's bad, and we're trying to get to pummel Apple into fixing this, but first they have to even acknowledge it. And chunking along on the Pico W underscore BLEIO. And next up is Tim, Foamy Guy. All right, thank you, Dan. Um, last week, I started updating uh, Learn Guide code to use the new Display.io root group API. Uh, there's a draft PR in with, I think, around 20 or so of those changes in them, but I'll be continuing this week, and there's uh, quite a few to do, so I'm not sure exactly how long it will take to get through all of them, but once you get in the rhythm, uh, they do start to go pretty fast because it's not that big of a change, so uh, that's the good news there. Um, I have been, uh, over the weekend is the last time I worked on it, but I've been continuing on this Funhouse IoT dashboard project uh, that I started a little while back. Uh, it's n approaching the point where it has all the functionality that I had originally envisioned. Uh, I have basically one or two more things that I wanted to add, and then um, basically happy with where it's at. Uh, this project can basically serve as a more ad advanced example for the HTTP server library, as well as... Um, uh, just a, uh, something showing off the new template engine uh, library that I was working on a few weeks back. Um, so I'm excited to get that into kind of the finalized state and publish it and maybe uh, try to pop on show and tell or something to show it off. Um, beyond that, uh, today I started investigating the this issue that's been reported with the Cleveland Art Project, uh, which is a Pi Portal project that's in the Learn Guide system. Um, I've been trying to narrow down to see if I could recreate the same issue. I did, I did eventually uh, get to the point where I can do that, and I think I now have an understanding, uh, again, uh, thanks uh, to Dan, I think I have an understanding of what's going on with it. Um, and my next steps there, my next intention is to start working backwards through the recent uh, versions of the NINA firmware and see if I can find one that's even remotely recent that still works um, to at least have a, a kind of workaround that would allow that project to be usable in the meantime. Um, but that is uh, that is all I've got for the week. Thanks. OK, thank you. All right, uh, Jeff has stepped off, so I'll read uh, their contribution now. One small PR to do less aggressive string compression on builds with plenty of free space, for now on RP2040 and Espressif. 
And then Jeff says also, I'm halfway through my vacation in Portugal and Spain approximately, posting occasional photos. And there's a link to where uh, the photos are on metapixel.com. Can follow me on Macedon or read with RSS Reader if you're interested. And next up is Liz. All right, so last week I continued working on some CircuitPython libraries. Uh, Scott met with me and gave me some great feedback and resources on thinking about software design. And then last week's episode of Embedded FM Podcast also discussed software design, which felt a bit kismet. Um, and uh, definitely check out that episode if you're into podcasts. Um, they really went in-depth on things. Uh, and I'm starting to feel uh, pretty comfortable with um, how to write a library. Uh, so over the weekend, I continued adding to my large matrix display project. Uh, this started as a sports scoreboard learn guide, and I hung out my wall for photos, and since then I've added open weather data and a clock to make it a little bit more useful and not just sports. Um, this past week, my partner and I started playing chess, and he wanted to have a way to keep track of and display in our house how many wins each of us had. So I'm using the SMS messaging in Adafruit.io uh, so that we can ping a feed, we each have a feed um, for each of us anytime we win and we put the move that we won with too so we can reference that later if we want to um and then the matrix portal gets a count of how many entries are in the feed and displays that count below our name and i also used vector io to show a chessboard pattern and that's what i've been working on all right thank you and next up is maker melissa uh hello so over the last couple of weeks because i was out last week um I updated the Qualia ESP32 S3 guide with additional pages on using uh, touch and figuring out the timings. Um, I added missing analog pins to the Qualia ESP32 S3 in CircuitPython. I went through bl uh, the Blinka and PyTFT guides and started updating for Bookworm. And they should be working, but I heard some people still have an issue, so I need to test that more. Uh, I updated the focal touch driver to work with the CST826 touch chip. Uh, and I tested uh, various potential fixes to GPIO not working on the Raspberry Pi 5 and decided to go with the GPIOD. Um, I added res the Raspberry Pi 5 support to Blinka and I kind of I have a PR, but I haven't tested uh, Ice Square C and Spy on that yet, but they should work. And then um, I fixed the uh, pull-ups and pull-downs for libgpiod and Blinka in that PR. And I'm going to continue going through the guides and testing on the uh, latest Raspberry Pi OS, uh, which is uh, Bookworm. And then I'll try and get the... I also need to try and get the Qualia buttons working through the IO expander. Um, hopefully I can get that working without any code changes. And then uh, I'll update my uh, focal touch pull request to improve uh, the chip detection since it's uh, not a focal touch chip. That's it. All right. Thank you, Melissa. Okay. And finally, uh, Scott has going to do status. Hey. Um, okay. So I sent a PR for splitting what is now called bus display, formerly just display. Uh, E-paper display, four wire, and I-squared-C display out of um, display.io into separate modules. Um, I-squared-C display also gets renamed to be I-squared-C display bus because it's not the display object itself. Uh, and I renamed parallel parallel display to parallel display bus as well, as well for the same reason. Uh, I also removed display.io's shape. Um, which is being a bit aggressive, but I'm pretty sure no one uses it. <laughs> um, we'll find out. I found one library that uses it, um, and we can update that. Uh, but nobody uses shape, and, and there's no real real reason to leave, leave it in there. Um, in this PR, I fixed a an issue with root group uh, in 9.0 as well. It works just fine in, in, eight, in 8, but it was broken in 9, so that fix is fixed in this PR as well, along with some changes to the PDF output of the docs. Uh, basically, the PDF output got so large, <laughs> like in particular, the so support matrix got so large that the PDF build wasn't working anymore. Uh, so I split it into two PDFs, one for like all the APIs and docs and stuff, and then one for the support matrix. So hopefully that'll give us some more time uh, for that to work. 
I sent out a PR to merge in 8.2.7 into main. Uh, specifically, this brings the RGB matrix fix into main, which will be good. Um, DJ Devin 3 asks, a lot of people use display shapes. Is that a different library? That is a different library. That is a Python library, um, which is part of the reason I'm like, we don't need this thing that's, that's native. Um, I also am working with Dan on the 121 uh, merge. I pushed some text test fixes, um, and I plan on coordinating with Dan later today on getting that finished up and 121 merged in. Uh, there is an issue with uh, NeoPixels right now on main. Uh, with has to do with uh, being able to get the transmit function. And this has to do with um, being able to... Yeah, I, I think I know what the fix is, and I want to make sure I add a test this time, because Dan and I have been, and Jeff, have been really good during merges to make sure all our tests work. Um, so we're finding CircuitPython broken in places where we haven't added a test to make sure CircuitPython works still okay. Um, so I'll, I'll probably take a look at that, you know, as we're working on 121 or, or similar so that, um, we should hopefully get that fixed before, uh, we do an alpha just because that's going to cause a lot of havoc, I think. Um, but yeah, lots of merge related things. And, uh, we did discuss, and I didn't put this in the list, but we also did discuss being more verbose for warnings, um, in particular, uh, with show going away, we, we thought we'd um, add a show implementation back that just tells you that it doesn't work anymore and to use regroup. Um, so we're going to have that. We'll have that in 9, and then we'll remove that in 10 completely. Um, and then I'm going to look into doing something similar for this like reorganize uh, display O thing, too. Um, yeah, for shape, uh, for not using shape generally, uh, either just a bitmap or a uh, vector IO uh, could you, could work. Yeah, that's that's all for me. <laughs> okay, thank you, Scott. Okay, that's it for uh, status updates. Um, are are in the weeds section is empty. This is would be an opportunity for longer discussions, but we don't have any this week unless someone has something last minute. But I don't think so. So um, let me just take a timestamp for this approximately. And then, uh, so finally, I think that's it. Uh, we'll wrap up now. Uh, this has been the CircuitPython Weekly for October 23rd, 2023. Thank you to everyone who participated. If you want to support Adafruit and CircuitPython and those of us who work on CircuitPython, consider purchasing from the Adafruit shop at adafruit.com. The video of this meeting will be released on YouTube at youtube.com slash Adafruit, and the podcast will be available on major podcast services. Uh, the meeting will also be uh, featured in the Python for Microcontrollers newsletter. Visit adafruitdaily.com to subscribe. The next meeting will be held Monday as usual at 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific time, and the meeting will be held on October 30th, 2023. That's Monday. Um, you can join this meeting by going to the Adafruit Discord, uh, adafru.it slash discord. And if you want to be notified about this meeting and any changes to the scheduled time or day because of a holiday or other reasons, you can ask to be added to the eight at sign Circuit Pythonista's role in Discord. So we hope we'll hear from you all next week. Thank you, everyone. And I'll stop recording.